So anyway, I went to Sri Lanka to try and de-coconut myself, right? This is, the, this is the problem I've got, okay? This is the problem I've got. I'm British and I'm proud of that, but I'm also proud of my Sri Lankan heritage, but I cannot connect with it. And the reason I cannot connect with it is because I do not speak the language, but I look like I should be able to speak the language, right? This is <laughs> an incredible Sri Lankan disguise, right? If you're... <laughs> If you're white and you go to Sri Lanka, you've got no problems because they just assume, obviously, you can't speak it. For me, it looks like I can speak it, and they're extremely friendly people. As soon as we landed, they're talking to me, like, so just, like, walking through the airport, bumping into someone, and I have to say, I'm so sorry, mate. I can barely understand Glaswegian. Like, there is... There's no banter to be had here. Sorry. And then I can't even connect with my family. That's a sad thing. I can't even connect with my family because they only speak a bit of English. I don't speak any Tamil. So I'll meet an uncle. I'm going, hello, uncle. Hello, Ramesh. You good? Yeah, I'm good. You good? Yes. <laughs> One of my uncles gave me an insight into Sri Lankan culture sort of accidentally, right? He uh, introduced me to his wife, brought over this sort of portly Sri Lankan woman. And then he goes, Ramesh, this is my wife. And I said, oh, lovely to meet you. And then he goes, fat, no? <laughs> and then I looked at her and she's going, hey, 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 fat, 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 <laughs> And then I realised my mum's not the arsehole. They're all arseholes. This is how I talk to them. <laughs> no British hang-ups. You're fat, you're ugly, who gives a shit? We can still be mates, do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is the weird situation, the weird situation in my life is that my mum and dad worried about my brother and I not being Sri Lankan enough. Also, conversely, worried about us not being English enough, right? And this is... My mum was so worried about me growing up in this country, right? My mum and dad both so worried about me growing up in this country, they gave me a secret weapon, right? Don't worry, it's not something I'm now going to detonate, all right? It's much, more, <laughs> it's much more innocent than that. This is my secret weapon. My first name is not Ramesh. Ramesh is my middle name, right? My first name is Jonathan, right? <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. But right, right, it's Jonathan, right? That's what it says on my birth certificate. Now, I didn't know that. <laughs> because when I was at home as a little kid, my mum and dad called me Ramesh. Do you know the first time I found out <laughs> what my name was? was my first day at school. You know, when the teachers have got the registers. Can you imagine that? I'm just sat there like, what? <laughs> Your first day at school is difficult enough as it is, right? <laughs> We're gonna find out you've got a secret identity. <laughs> I came home, I said to him, I can't remember exactly what I said to my dad, something along the lines of, what is my name? And he said to me, well, we don't want to have to discuss this with you this early on, but I will explain it to you, Ramesh. You know, in this country, there is discrimination, and sometimes you don't get opportunities that you, that you deserve because of your ethnicity. So we thought you could use this name when you're applying for things. <laughs> and hopefully dodge the issue. <laughs> it's a very well-intentioned plan. I don't know how he thought that was going to play out, right? So I put that on an application form. The guy looks at it and goes, Ah! Jonathan Ranganathan. <laughs> Must be a white guy. Must be a white guy. Let's get him in. Let's get him in. No, finally, a good old traditional English name. Now, this is great. No, oh, good, I like the cut of his jib, this guy. No, good English fella. No, he's a front-runner, I tell you. No, it's between him and Christopher Patel. And then, what the shit happens at the interview? I mean, <laughs> I've got to meet somebody. So I rock up there. Hello there, who are you? I'm Jonathan. You're Jonathan. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Have you seen him? <laughs> well, does he look like, I thought he was the driver, but it, he's actually the applicant. <laughs> well, does he look like a Jonathan? He looks like he literally just stepped off a boat. So it's actually you that's Jonathan, yeah? I can't fucking believe this. Can we just get that light on? No, he is that dark. Jesus. 
<laughs> well, I blame you for this. Well, we had exactly the same problem with Christopher. <laughs> anyway, I've digressed massively. I'm in Starbucks. <laughs> you remember this? I'm in Starbucks. I'm drinking my coffee. I'm at my laptop. I'm having a wonderful time, right? I'm at a shared table. This woman walks in. She orders her coffee, right? She comes to sit down. She's got to sit near me because I'm at a shared table. As she goes to sit down, she knocks my coffee onto my laptop, breaking it instantly. Then she turns to me and she goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Can I get you another coffee? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. I will have a Mac Bucacino. <laughs> so this is how Starbucks showed me how British I am, right? The woman spilt the coffee. I've gone to her. Oh, my God. Well, the important thing is, are you OK? <laughs> Please don't worry about getting me another coffee. I'll just pour the coffee from the laptop back into my cup. <laughs> Well, yes, it is completely destroyed, but at least I've made a friend. <laughs> I phoned my wife to tell her about it, right? I phoned my wife to tell her about it. And I love my wife very much. But what I discovered is, when something horrible happens to you, and you tell the person that you care about more than anyone else in the world about what happened, Every single thing they say is fucking annoying. Like, every <laughs> single word that woman said made me want to punch a wall until my knuckles bent. I couldn't do it. You know what she said to me? Is it broken? Is it broken? No. If anything, it's running faster. Uh, it's got a nice... It's got a nice little coffee smell. Just thought I'd phone you up, let you know the good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's coming up, Ramesh. Oh, my God, she's a very funny woman. Not intentionally. I'll give you an example. I was due to do a gig in Barton-upon-Humber last year. Two weeks before I'm due to do the gig, I get a phone call from my agent. She said to me, Ramesh, a little bit of an awkward situation. The venue have been contacted by the BNP, and they say that they're fundamentally opposed to you performing in Barton. And if you go ahead with the performance, they are going to stage a protest, the likes of which Barton has never seen. Now... <laughs> I don't know what that means. Are we going to dress up? Is there going to be cake? You know, I've got no idea. <laughs> My agent said to me, what do you want to do? I said, well, the tour's not been selling that well. This could be exactly the kind of PR <laughs> that could give it a kick. Is there any way you could organise, sort of contact some other racist organisations <laughs> so you can get them to unify and get this into the nationals? Do you know what I mean? 